Hello and welcome to our ninth session and in this session we are going to explore about the user preferences. So to begin with Blender has already been launched. I will come over here and this user preferences is usually present in the edit menu you will have the preferences and the keyboard shortcut is see if you press control and if you press the comma this will launch the user preferences. So in the user preferences, so once you launch this user preferences here, you can set all your default preferences for the blender. So to begin with, you have different tabs on the left hand side and the very first tab is the interface tab in which you have the display. And when it comes to display, the very first thing we set here is the resolution scale. Say for example, if you see these texts are very small and it is not readable, you can increase its size by setting the resolution scale. Say for example, instead of 1, I will set this to 1.5 and press enter. So immediately you can see all these fonts have become bigger and I can even make it 2 and it becomes still bigger. See how the fonts appears. So I will set it back to 1. And then the line thickness, the line width, I can set it to default thin or thick. So this line thickness will be made thick. So I will leave it at default. And as soon as Blender is launched, do you want to show splash screen? If you enable this, the splash screen will be shown every time you launch Blender. Then you have one option called as developer extras. And if you enable this developer extras, Immediately you will see this experimental new tab here and clicking on it you can make some tweaks for developers. So this I will come back to interface right now we, we doesn't need it I will switch it off. Then you have tooltips so if I enable tooltips if I bring my mouse over here you can see the tooltip shown there okay. So this tooltips is enabled then Python tooltips if you need it you can enable it but right now we are not working on Python so I am not going to enable it. Next the search when you actually search for the tools it is in edit menu search. It will automatically show you the last search recently used search will be on the top. If you click somewhere on the blank area the search window will be closed. So after this in editor you have region overlap. So if region overlap is on, see the tools will appear only in this band. But if I switch it off, you will see a black strip and inside this strip the tools will be there. So right now I does not want it, so I will enable region overlap. Then navigation control, you have the four buttons here, see these four buttons, I can switch it on or off by clicking here. So it is off, now it is on. Now the next thing is when you are using the color picker, you have the default color HSV means say for example, I will come in this property window to the world and when I click on the color here, you are going to see this color picker and this color picker opens in HSV mode and this is round. So if I change this to square SVH and if I click now, so you are seeing square and this panel is different now. Okay, so I will set it back to color HSV. Then header position, header position means for every module here, say for example, if you come to this 3D viewport, you have this object mute, view, select, add object, everything on the top. You can come in the header position and if you choose bottom, see the entire line came down here. Okay, so if you want for every panel, if you want this to appear at the bottom, see even in the timeline window, all the panels have gone to the bottom. So I will set this back to top. Okay, so it came back to top. Now the next thing is factor display type. So this you have two options. Factor means the values will be measured between 0 and 1. Whereas if you change it to percentage, it will be measured between 0 and 100 and I will set this back to factor display type to factor. Then the next option you have is the temporary editors. The temporary editors one is the rendering and the file browser or the two temporary editor. So say for example I will close this preferences I will come here and if I click render render image 
you can now see this rendered image opens in a new window. Okay, so if you doesn't want it to open in new window, I can come to edit preferences and here in this option of temporary editors, I can choose any of the other option. So keep user interface or maximized area, I can open it in image editor. So I will leave it at new window. Similarly, even file browsers when you open, this is going to open as a new window or you can open it as a maximized area tab in your workspace. So I will leave it back to new window. So this is about the temporary editors. Then you have status bar. At the bottom, you have the status bar. Right now, only thing it is displaying is the version number 4.2.2. Now here, if I enable scene statistic, see you get the complete scene stat statistics shown over here. If I click on scene duration, you can see the scene duration is enabled here. Then system memory, it is showing how much system memory is left. Video memory, that is my GPU memory is shown here. So I can enable it like this. So right now I will switch off all these four. You can also enable it by bringing your mouse on the status bar, right click and you can enable this. And after the status bar, the next thing is the language. Say for example, I want all the interface to be in Hindi. Then I can click here. Hindi. See, I can select Hindi here. Okay, so I, I will leave it to English right now. And then you have text rendering. When it is rendering text, anti-aliasing means the text edges will be smooth. And subpixel anti-aliasing, I am not going to enable it. This will affect the performance. So I am not going to enable it. Then hinting, I will leave it to auto. So you have none, slide, full and auto. I will leave it to auto. Then I can also change the font that is used in Blender. So instead of this font, if I want to use my own font, I can just click on this folder icon here and go to folder and I can select any of the font from the C windows fonts. Right now I will leave it default. I will cancel this. Similarly, even mono spaced fonts, I can choose it here. So with this, I will close this text rendering. Then finally you have the menus and in the menus, if you right now, when you come to file, only when I click the menu opens, I can enable open on mouse over. And now if I bring mouse over here and if I just hold it, see automatically the menu opens. Okay. So now, right now I will switch it off. Then you have pie menus. Pie menus means these are the menus that appear. Say for example, I will bring the mouse over this 3D area and if I press Z, this is the pie menu. And in this pie menu, say for example, these values are appearing very far, I want it closer means I can come over here and in radius instead of 100, if I make it 30 pixel, now if I come here and press Z, see this appears closer. So I will click outside and I will set this back to around 75 pixel. Now after the interface panel, the next panel you have is the viewport panel. And in the viewport panel, I will bring it over here and you can see in the viewport, I can show the object info. If I switch it off, say the object info is off. I will enable it. Then view name, in which view you are seeing it. Say for example, I bring the mouse over here and press numpad 7. Now this is in top view, it is showing here. So this one, I can off it or on it. Then you have, when you play back the frame rate, I can set it to sample 8 or I can increase it. I will leave it to default. This depends upon your machine performance. Then gizmo size. Say for example, I will come here and I will select this cube. I will come here and take the move tool. You are seeing the gizmo here. So right now this gizmo is of a size of say 75 pixel. So now if I drag it and make it big, see the gizmo size is going to change. You can make it bigger. So right now I will set it back to 75. Now after this you have the HDRI preview size. I will come to texture shading here. I will click here and you are seeing the HDRI preview. The preview size of this I can set it over here. Then you have the 3D viewport axis that you are seeing here. Right now it is in the top view. So this one, either I can set it to off, it will not be visible at all, or I can set it to simple axis. Simple axis means it will show like this. 
it will not be interactive and finally the third one you have is the interactive navigation so here i can click here and i can move to different views like this i can click here drag and rotate so this is interactive so this is enabled and the size also i can increase or decrease so right now i will set it to 80 pixel then you have when your object is in edit mode so i will select this cube i will press tab or i will come to object mode to edit mode the lines you are seeing here this in edit mode if i enable fresnel this will be this will make the selection option more easier but right now it's not required i can switch it off so i will come back here to the object mode now after this in the quality of viewport anti-aliasing i have set it to eight sample so i will leave it at default then the wires that you see in wireframe view these wires that you see you can see some amount of zigzagness in this wire so this you can set it here the quality you can set it here right now i have set this to eight samples you have various option i can if you want to limit the size of a texture to 1024 or 2048 i can limit it if you have any problem with your graphic card or if you doesn't have a graphic card you can limit the size of your textures but right now i will keep it off and an anisotropic filtering this i am going to explain it later it is set to 2x this value you will understand after i speak about it so leave this at default and clip alpha this also i will explain it to you later and after this you have image display method it is set to automatic you can display it as a 2d texture or glsl or automatic you have three options what is this glsl these things i will discuss explain it later then when you are doing the selection gpu death picking i have enabled it then you have subdivision also gpu subdivision is enabled it third tab is the lights and when it comes to light this is nothing but we have already discussed this so if you come to this solid shading here and if i click here you can see this studio lighting that you are going to use and i can edit this studio lighting over here I can click on edit studio light and change these values and I can save it. So this option is pr present over here and apart from this you can also edit the matte caps. So if I click on this you have some 23 or 24 matte caps as of this and you can also bring external matte caps and install it here. So that future is provided here and when you are using HDRIs I will come to this later when it comes to global lighting. So in that case right now we have not using any of the external HDRIs. So these things we will discuss it later. Then comes the fourth tab editing. Now in editing whenever a new object is added say I have added a cube. So the link material is set to object data means when the material is connected to the object see if you open it you have the object data and inside the object data you have the material now say for example i will set it to object and this here auto save is on so it will be automatically saved so if i close this see immediately you can see now the object data is not linked to this so that's why you are not seeing this so i have to manually add the material here so i have to select it come to the material tab and i have to choose the material okay so there is some issue i am not seeing this so uh, entire cube is appearing totally black when i changed it and if you have any issue like this you can go to edit preferences back and in this now you can come back here to the tab here click here and choose this option load factory preferences so when i click on load factory difference preferences and if i click load now automatically then if i save this then if i close it see everything came back to normal just now i will again come back to edit preferences and then when a new object is created whether it should be aligned to the world or view or 3d cursor we can set it by default it is set to world let us leave it as it is as soon as you add it do you want to enable the edit mode this is switched off the if whenever you create an empty the size of that empty will be one cube press x and delete it now i will come to add me empty and when i add a cube empty this size will be set to one again press x and delete it i will come back here add mesh and i will add a uv sphere 
Now, the other thing here is whenever you duplicate an object, so I have an object here, uh, the keyboard shortcut to duplicate is shift plus D. And when I duplicate it, what all components of the model should be duplicated? You can select it. So, right now, by default, material, this node tracks and particle and volume are not duplicated. So, if you want it, you can enable it. So, this we can set it here. Then after that, you have the 3D cursor. So, this is the 3D cursor that you are seeing. So, this option you can set it. So, the annotation color means I can take this pen here and mark something here in 2D. The color of this and the radius of this, I can set it here. Open the weight paint and in weight paint, see whenever you are painting, white represents opaque and black represents transparency. So, this range you can set it over here, you can add your own custom gradient. So, these things as we work on it, you will understand it. Then for grease pencil, you have the options. We are not going to use it much as of now because this is related only to 2D animation. Then you have text editor. So if I come over here and if I click here and if I open the text editor, here, the character pairs, if you want to auto close it, you can enable it. So, right now it is not required. I will now again come back here, bring the mouse here and press shift plus F5. Next is the animation aspect. So, when I come back to animation here and you can see here, allow negative frames. So, here when you are working on that, normally the range starts from 1. If you want to start from minus 7, so you cannot move it back. So, if you want to allow negative frame, if you enable allow negative frames and if you save this and if you move this, so I can even move it on the negative side. So, right now I will disable it and save it. So, right now auto save is not happening. What all keyframes I can add when I press I button is mentioned here. These things you will understand once we come into the animation. So, right now this does not make any sense for you, but just know where all these features are present. Then you have F curse, that is when you are doing the animation, the path, whether it should be linear or bezer, you can set it here. Default interpolation is set to bezer. This you might be knowing if you have already worked on After Effects. So, you can set it to bezer or linear. So, we will change it to linear in one of the session that I will tell you later. Then after that, you have default handle auto clamped means the bezer handles will be locked. Okay, it will be auto clamped. So, this is this future is on. So, either you can auto clamp it automatic vector aligned free, you have so many options here. So, it is set to auto clamp. So, X, Y, Z to RGB, this is on for high quality drawing is switched on. So, these are the options you are seeing in the animation. Then if I come to get extension, this is a very important future that you have to see because I have set it to factory reset. It is again asking me whether you want to assess online extensions. So, if I click on allow online assess, this is going to assess all the online extensions. So, right now what has happened is, in our first class, we had added the screencast keys and we have just reset this to factory default. So, that is why in screencast keys, I have to come to view detail and I have to enable it once again. And because in factory default, this was hidden and I have to again save this. And this add-ons and get extensions are the same. Previously, before version 4, we had add-ons and now we are using get extension. And in get extension, you can use some of the most beautiful extensions along with Blender. So, some of them are, say for example, you are designing something and you need a nut and a bolt. So, if you want to add a nut and a bolt, instead of designing it, you can come to get extension here and just type bolt. When you type bolt, you have one bolt factory and this is released by Blender. This is not a third party tool. If you just click on install, this bolt factory will be installed. So, I am going to install this. Once you install this, you open this, uh, then you come over here, go to view details, see that it is enabled. Now, once it is enabled, now I will come over here and I will choose file new general and I am going to create a new file. And in this new file, you are not again uh, not seeing the screencast keys because I have to click here or press N on the keyboard come to screencast keys, come to screencast keys, I will switch it off once and I will switch it on again 
and now it is visible. I will set the font size of this to 20. I will increase the line thickness to around 3 and I will set the mouse size to 45. So, I will make it little thicker and better so that you can see it better. I will select this cube, I will press X and I will delete it. Now, if I come to add mesh, you have a new tool here called bolt and when I click on bolt, this creates a bolt. Right now, it is very small, so that is why you are not seeing it. If you press the period button or the full stop button on your numpad, it gets zoomed and now you can see this bolt is automatically created and you have this auto bolt factory wherein you can sit so many options over here. So, instead of bolt, if you need nut, this will get converted into nut. So, this is a new tool that we have added through extension. I will come back to edit preferences. So, like this, we can get different extensions and we can install it here. Now, the next thing here is the themes. Themes means the color theme of your Blender software. So, when you are using the Blender software, say if you are bored with the same color theme, you can set your own color. So, in user interface, say for example, for the box, I can use a different color. For number field, I can use a different color. So, like this, I can customize all the color and create a preset. So, right now, there are two presets here. One is the Blender light. This is the light preset, then you have the dark preset and you can also install this preset from third party application or someone else would have written this blender theme, you can install it and use it. So, this is about the themes, then you have input, this emulate numpad. See, sometimes when you are working on laptops, laptops does not have the numpad. So, you, if you are using a uh, portable keyboard which does not have a number pad, then you can click on emulate numpad. And now, if you press Alt and number 1, this becomes the numpad one. So, in this way, you can emulate it. I will switch it off. Similarly, if you have an Apple machine or if you have a mouse which has only two buttons, then you can em enable emulate three button mouse. And in this case, again, what happens is when you bring the mouse and click Alt and left click will be the middle click. Okay. So, this also I will off it because I already have a three button mouse. So, with this, other options here is for a tablet, you can set the sensitivity, softness and other parameters and then you have touchpad, you can use the multi touch gestures, you can on it and finally, you have a different kind of mouse available in the market to work in Blender and they are called as NDOF. In short, NDOF stands for number of degrees of freedom. See, you will have some mouses like this, space mouse compact. This is around 21,000 rupees. If when you are using these kind of mouse and also you have a company called connection, 3D connection. So, this tool, say for example, this costs around 40,000 rupees and this kind of mouse is used when you are doing 3D modeling. When people work on AutoCAD and uh, different CAD and design softwares, they use this kind of mouse and if you want to use this kind of mouse in Blender, you can, you have all the features here. So, you can configure its controls over here. Then we come to navigation and when we come to navigation, whenever we are moving around in the scene, either I can use it as a turntable like this or track mode. So, I will set this back to turntable. The orbit sensitivity, you can set it if you want it. Then perspective, I have enabled it auto. Auto means now what happens is, See, when you are seeing it in, I will press 1 on numpad and if you see, when you are seeing it in the front view, this is in orthographic. But as soon as I rotate it, see this became perspective. Now, I does not want it even when I rotate it, I want this to be in orthographic only means I can come over here and I can switch off perspective, save the preferences. Now, then, now if I come here and if I press 1, this is in front perspective now. I will press 5 and I will change it to orthographic and even when I change, even now this is in orthographic only. So, for this we have, we can enable this option here in edit preferences navigation and I right now keep this auto perspective on and auto depth also if you require you can on it, but right now I am not going to use that. So, these things we will explain, I will explain it later. Then in zoom, Either you can dolly it. So, when I zoom it like this, so this is going to dolly like this. See, this is the dolly 
or you can use other option like continuous or scale. So I will leave it at dolly. You can even invert the mouse direction. Say for example, when I am moving it, so when I am moving it up, it is zooming. But if I invert the mouse direction, if I save this and now if I move up, it zooms out. Change it right now, I will switch it off and I will save this and then you have fly and walk. So I will cover this later. Then finally, the most important thing is the key map and in key map, we are going to set the keys means say for example, for selection mouse is set for left selection for space because I reset to factory default it is set back to play. I wanted to set it to search and again save this then active gizmo by dragging the gizmo it is going to move or by pressing you have two options. I will leave it at drag then tool keys I will leave it to immediate and the most important thing here is in this for every button say for example in window for new file open recent open for everything you have a keyboard shortcut. So this keyboard shortcut is matched with this preset blender. So I can click plus here and you can create your own new keyboard shortcut and you can allocate it. So and you can also search. So if I go to name here and if I come here is and say for example, I want a particular command say I want a rotate command means for rotate the keyboard shortcut is R. I can click here and if you if required I can change it. So similarly here instead of name by key binding means if I click here and if I type Q on my keyboard Q is attached with so many keyboard shortcuts. So if you press control Q it will quit blender. If you press only Q whatever tool you have selected it will act to quick save a uh, favorite in the window mode. So this is about the key map which you can co configure it based on your convenience. You can change the keyboard shortcuts. Then finally the most important thing is this system. So if I when I come to system see here the most important thing you have to do it as soon as you install blender is if you have a graphic card you have to enable the option. Either you can enable CUDA, Optics, HIP or Open API. So right now if you are using an NVIDIA machine you can use CUDA and you can use your graphic card over here or you can even use Optics. Optics is better and I have Intel graphic card and NVIDIA. This is the inbuilt graphic card. So I am using this NVIDIA graphic and only when you have enabled this when I come over here to render and when I select cycles, I can now set here to GPU compatible important and apart from this, if you want you say you have multiple version of blender and you want all blender files to open only in version 4.2 means click on this register button all blender files will be registered for this version in network. What is the timeout? So connection limit. So these things are allotted over here. Then memory, what is the number of maximum undos, 32 undos are allowed. So undo memory limit, there is, we have not added any limit. Then console scroll back, so you have so many options over here. This is regarding the performance of your system and in video sequencer, memory cache limit is set to 4096 and if you want, you can also enable disk cache and give a path to it. It uh, just like in After Effects, we use media disk catch. You can use it over here, and all these options are set in system. And then you have save and load. When I click on save load, every time when you quit, it will ask for a save prompt, and it is going to save one version additional. Say for example, whenever you save the file, say for example, I come here file save, and I am going to save this as say in some drive I will give it the name as say Satvik and I save this. Now there will be one more version of this file created with an extension blend1. So that if something happens and if this file gets correct, corrupted you can rename the blend1 as blend and you can use it. So you can have one version if you want two version you can enable two version. So number of version is set to one then recent files 20 recent files will be created by an auto save every two minutes it is automatically going to save it and the file preview type is set to auto and file browser these things I will leave it as it is 
and if you want to auto run python script you can give an external path and ask it to run by itself and final thing is you have file paths here for fonts it is set to see windows fonts and for all textures you can set a folder for all sounds you can set a folder especially in temporary files normally what happens is as you use the blender if you are using c drive with very less space i can set these temporary files i can click here and i can use my d drive and in d drive i can create a folder called blender and i can use this d drive blender as my temporary file folder so i am going to use set it to d blender so similarly when you render the output where it has to render these things or this also i will set it in d blender so whenever you do render render files will be placed over here so then render cache also i will set this to d blender so so that my c drive doesn't get a uh, cluster then after this we are going to come to this asset libraries later and for this asset library you can set the path and this i am going this there will be a separate class where we are going to deal with this asset library separately so these are the user preferences that you can set right now i will come here and i save this and if you have any problem you can again reset it so right now i will close this so with this we have completed all the components of the user interface and from our next session we are going to enter into our second chapter where we are going to work in blender and start building some models using the primitives we will call it as the object mode modeling so this we are going to start from our next session thank you